My name is Robert Ben Morby, founder of DIY Electronics. DIY Electronics started in 2013 with a vision to drive innovations and change in our communities through making hardware and electronics easily accessible to students, hobbyists, semi-professionals and industry professionals alike. I've been part of the ASREG Phoenix team since 2013 during my undergrad at UKZN, working alongside the team as an avionics and telemetry engineer. In 2014, I began to introduce 3D printing into the program. 3D printing allowed us to rapidly prototype designs for testing before final manufacturing processes. This year, one of my tasks for this campaign was to design a wireless video telemetry system for the live video feed transmitted from the nose of the rocket. I also designed the custom embedded electronics to control the main oxidizer control valve, MOV, between the tank and the motor, as well as the vent valve controller and the MOV override safety system. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today to chat a bit about the Phoenix 1B rocket program, the role of 3D printing in the South African rocket industry, and DIY Electronics' involvement with ASRIC. So Nino, if you would like to chat to us a little bit about how 3D printing technology has changed and contributed to the aerospace industry. 3D printing in itself, you know, it gives unrivaled design freedom and um, so you're not constrained to normal or traditional manufacturing methods. So you can get away with really lightweight, um, cutting edge design that typically lends to a far superior and more optimized product. Um, you can see that with uh, overseas companies such as uh, Rocket Labs and Orbex, who are 3D printing their engines and um, other lightweight components. And thank goodness for the stuff, because I don't think um, the small satellite market could be as competitive as it is at the moment without 3D printing. And um, how is 3D printing used specifically in the Phoenix 1B sounding rocket launches? Actually going all the way back to 1A, um, as far as I know, I think I was the first person to do any 3D printing on that project uh, back when 3D printing was in its infancy in about 2013. Um, and at, at that point, there were um, a lot of budget constraints for, for one thing. So 3D printing is a, a great enabler in terms of uh, low cost uh, prototyping. Um, and also we had a quite a, quite a challenging, um, uh, you know, niche enclosure designs to do for, for the uh, oxidizer valve. Um, so I, I ended up de designing an integrated enclosure for the valve that also housed the electronics and the server um, that was 3D printed in multiple pieces and assembled. Um, and then, yeah, going forward, um, the, the 3D printing has been a great enabler for creating specifically custom electronics enclosures. Um, so you can you can make your electronics in, in, in any sort of uh, shape or modularity that you need it instead of having to stick with sort of industry standard shapes and sizes um, and make them fit in, in specific locations and then design the box around them instead of you know starting with an uh, off-the-shelf rectangular box and, and trying to fit that. Um, so that, that gives you a lot of capability to improve um, your, your packaging um, and then also uh, I think on the mechanical side of things um, things that were previously very, very difficult and expensive to produce for example custom gear sets for, for, the, for the, the, the servo motor and the valve um, can actually just be 3D printed now. It's exactly the right ratio. Um, and, and you can quickly adjust the uh, mechanical performance just based on adjusting the thickness or the material that you use. It. So yeah, I think um, it's, it's, it greatly improves the speed that you can put it up um, and, and the, the, the capabilities for putting into custom designs. Yeah, definitely, definitely change the game. Um, okay, and then how has DIY Electronics contributed to the Phoenix 1B program? Um, the Phoenix program is, is our flagship uh, human capital development program, and it's critical that um, it shows success. It's also critical that the students who come into that program have exposure to all of the basic technologies that help make them good rocket engineers. But the problem with the program is quite resource constrained. So it's been um, it's been phenomenal working with DIY Electronics because uh, for two reasons. One, because we get great value in the products that we buy from them, and it's not just in the in the Phoenix program. Our, our mechanical engineering department buys in um, considerable um, numbers of printers for for the broader mechanical program. But within within the Phoenix program, um, so not only is it 
in this resource constrained environment, it's really important for us to work with partners who are reliable, who can back up the technology with, with service and advice and, and whose equipment, uh, when they supply it, we know that it's reliable and it will work. So um, it's, the Phoenix program has been um, really, has really benefited tremendously from, from DIY Electronics' involvement. Uh, it's, it's allowed us to do these prototyping exercises quicker. It cuts down cost, it cuts down time as well. Um, and all of that enables the program to make more rapid progress. So um, from, the, from the enclosures, the gears uh, that Rob was referring to, the, the, the electronics enclosures that we can produce quickly, uh, all of that is phenomenally enabling to the broader program. And I think, uh, I think Kai has some further info on, on, on the technical details of that. Yeah, just, just to reinforce what Mark said, uh, we are primarily mechanical engineers. So um, having the expertise of electronic and electrical engineers at DIY Electronics has been invaluable to us. And um, when we come into developing uh, microcontroller boards and control circuits and telemetry systems. We just don't have the depth of knowledge which DIY Electronics um, has been able to provide us. So from that point of view, it's been in, uh, invaluable and it's definitely filled a large gap within our expertise, which we're grateful for. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, the, the, the expertise provided by um, DIY Electronics and the technical support on the 3D printing, rapid, rapid prototyping, um, just rapid supply of components, which we need to, to stick onto our development schedules um, has, has been a great help. Great, thank you. And um, then we'd like to talk about the benefits of industry and academia working together, for example, the development and supply of high tech components and tools to help educate students and provide knowledge they can use later in their careers. Yeah, so um, one of the major things which uh, we have all greatly learned from and, and have jumped on the trend is 3D printing and the, the, the supply of those components from DIY Electronics um, has helped us all learn a lot and helped us to rapidly develop uh, multiple, multiple components in the vehicles, um, as well as uh, just experience working with different suppliers and how they work and getting technical advice from them on, on what does work, what doesn't work. That goes a long way to helping students integrate into industry in the future. <clears throat> awesome. Great. And um, Jean, if you could tell us a little bit about the future plans for Azure. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> okay, so sure. Yes. In, in order to talk about the future, I think it's good to take stock of where we are at the moment. We've been going for 12 years this year, uh, and we've come a long way. And I think the one of the the most important outputs of, of ASREG as a research group has been setting up a system of training students in high technology uh, fields and disciplines. And I think we've done that incredibly well and we've trained up uh, a significant number of students, many of whom are still involved with ASREG. So we've got an amazing base uh, to take forward. The success of the Phoenix campaign has just reminded us of how much South Africa wants to see uh, rockets fly and, and how, um, how important the concept of space to South Africa is. So I think what we are now gearing towards is, is getting to space. Ultimately, we've got a major development program called the Sapphire Liquid Rocket Engine Development Program. And, and what we're doing with that program is to take, uh, you know, all the skills we've, we've accumulated so far and apply that to developing small modular liquid rocket engines for a small satellite launch vehicle. So that's really a, a major ambition of ours now to, to start developing rocket engines that can be used on, uh, on launch vehicles that launch small satellites from the African continents. And in addition to that, of course, we're going to continue with the Phoenix program. And I think we're really now very well primed to, to, to grow it and to uh, enhance the impact it has uh, in terms of STEM uh, on school kids and uh, other universities as well. So we've got some plans in, in store for that. We want to start flying some payloads uh, during our campaigns. We want to run our campaigns more regularly. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward uh, to that. And it's, it's going to be a great, great journey. And we're very happy to have DIY Electronics partnered uh, with us on that journey. Yeah, that's amazing. We're very, very excited to see see what's in store. And um, yeah, on behalf of the Electronics and uh, Rob, it's been a great honor to, to work with all of you and um, work on the program. It's very, very exciting. And yeah, thank you so much for all of your input. 
and anything else anyone would like to add to the front? To say thank you to you guys. I think you've done an yeah. amazing job in supporting us and we are so, so very grateful for it. And I think, you know, we kind of we kind of do a lot of thinking out the box and I think DIY Electronics does the same thing. You know, it's it's nice to see the synergies and, and how how uh, how far those synergies can take things. So thank you for all of your help. Yeah, I want to I want to back I want to back that up as well. And Sean has given the thanks on on behalf of uh, of Esrig, but I want to add just on behalf of the uh, of the University of Mechanical Engineering. It's uh, you know what we 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 send a lot of our students to DIY to buy items related to this 3D printing going on in most of our final year projects, especially with the COVID lockdown where a lot of the traditional methods of machining and fabrication just can't be done because of, of the restrictions. And um, yeah. so <clears throat> having, having this uh, additive manufacturing capability inside the building and then having the backup from DIY electronics outside of the building uh, when we need it is, is it, it, has, it has actually made a tremendous difference to, to the program, the mechanical engineering program and uh, we, we, we consider DIY to be a trustworthy partner. So, uh, and, and, and also um, we're grateful to you for all the work that you've done on the, uh, on the promotion of the Phoenix campaign, the video edits, which are fantastic. Um, so yeah, thank you to, to the whole team uh, for that. And, and we're just really looking forward to working with you going into the future on more exciting projects. Fantastic, thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, it would be wouldn't be a very exciting city to, to work in if we didn't have stuff going on like what you guys are up to. <laughs> sure. Okay, yeah, thanks everyone. All right, thank you everyone. Cool. Thanks, Alice. Yeah, cheers. Cool. Have a good day, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Both launches were a massive success, breaking the South African record, showcasing the talent and capabilities of a strong academic team in conjunction with industry partners. DIY Electronics is looking forward to working with ASRIG in the future and we are excited to see how 3D printing will continue to shape and contribute to the South African aerospace industry at large.